On today's episode, we are going to take a closer look at your favorite semiconductor company. I know it's Intel. Just let me know in the comments below how much you love this company. So unfortunately, today, Intel ended the day closed down about 5% down. And I do want to say there are some bad news affecting the company right now. But there's also some good news for this big giant. If this is your first time here, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Check out the pinned comment for a lot of great links and also my new tech channel where I post on a daily basis. So let's get started. I do want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and make sure to check out fool.com slash Jose to get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So just a quick price action on Intel today. The stock dropped about $2.30. That's about 5.3%. And we can see this is, it hasn't been the best year for Intel from its 52 week high. The stock is down almost 20 percent and unfortunately in the past five years unlike many other semiconductor companies this one hasn't really grown as much in the past five years it has only returned about 15.46 percent to investors it is important to say right dividend um this company does pay a bit of a dividend yield right now that percentage is about 3.5 percent so those returns are a lot higher just based on dividends alone so like i mentioned i first want to start off with some good news affecting the overall industry and then unfortunately we're going to take a closer look at what's negatively affecting intel first if we take a look global semiconductor sales have increased 21.1 percent year to year and about 0.7 percent month to month in april this is reported by the semiconductor industry association sia to be short this is insane because this is also the 13th consecutive months where global semiconductor sales have increased by more than 20 percent on a year-to-year -year basis indicating consistently high and growing demand for semiconductors across a range of critical sectors one of those sectors is definitely the data center markets one that i'm super bullish on and obviously one that intel is a player in they do mention that sales were up compared to april 2021 and one of the biggest growths was in the americas the americas actually grew 40.9 percent compared to same time last year i do believe this is probably where a good portion of data centers are spending is being used at the moment number two is europe with about 19.2 percent and in japan with 18.5 percent growth they do also share kind of month to month and month to month americas grew 3.1 percent but we are kind of seeing a slowdown in china down 0.6 percent and down in europe 3.3 percent i wonder if things kind of happening in the region right now are impacting that month to month sales and for those that want to see a pretty cool graph here's one about semiconductor revenue since 1996 and we can see a nice uptrend overall uh, in the past 26 28 years all right so next some other good news about intel your favorite semiconductor company they're actually partnering with one of my favorite semiconductor companies and that is nvidia so nvidia actually creates infrastructure solutions as well and one of their infrastructure solutions is actually selecting intel sapphire rapids cpu and sapphire rapids it's intel's next generation of server processor and this is going to go in their nvidia's dgx h100 for those not familiar with the dgx h100 these are pretty much the infrastructure play that nvidia has kind of created to kind of form a new form of revenue segment and here we can see the dgx h100 comes with about eight nvidia's h100 or the hopper gpu um, gpus which is their next architecture and previously they never mentioned which cpu was going to go into the system they just mentioned that they have uh they were going to be using dual x86 now in the recent chat um the ceo of nvidia has confirmed that they will be using sapphire rapids which i think is a pretty interesting move the reason being is because the previous generation the dgx a100 which was on their ampere architecture was actually running AMD's second uh, epic generation CPU. So they're kind of shifting from AMD here to kind of Intel. Jensen just mentioned that the, he continues to have great partnerships with Intel and AMD, but for the hopper generation, he selected the Sapphire Rapids to be the CPU for the NVIDIA hopper. Main reason is the Sapphire Rapids has excellent single threaded performance. Okay, so now that we have some good news for Intel, unfortunately, we're going to take a closer look at what some bad Bad news affecting the company so the first bad news is intel sapphire rapids is reportedly delayed again and this is not going to be a substantial delay it seems we are still expected to have the new cpus this year 
Uh, again, so I don't think it's going to be a big, big issue. I think this is more just annoying for investors because Intel has definitely been one that has been delaying their products a lot recently. I mean, one of the bear cases I would say here is if they continue to delay, then maybe a company like NVIDIA might be like, even though we kind of chose the CPU Sapphire Rapids for our infrastructure play, if you don't have the product with us, then we're going to have to be we're going to be forced to go with AMD. Uh, so in the right now, it seems like it's not going to do that. But if this delay continues, I can see kind of a shift like that happening maybe in the future. The final news I want to take a closer look at is probably the main reason the stock price is down right now is Citigroup kind of mentioned that they are providing even more caution for Intel investors as they believe that Intel is going to miss their quarter two earnings and they might even cut their kind of outlook. And it's reportedly that Intel's management mentioned some form of slowdown due to macroeconomics for some of their customers. And for that reason, Citigroup is a little bit more cautious. Citigroup has actually already kind of downgraded Intel before due to kind of PC sales slowdown. Uh, and now this is kind of just more affirming that bear case that they had before. I do want to say in form of Intel, this is a stack that continues to get beat down. So any form of true bullish news, I believe, can really cause the stock price to go up dramatically. Uh, at the same time, there is a lot of hoops that Intel needs to go through uh, before kind of getting that positive affirmation for investors. At the moment, I'm personally not an investor of Intel, um, but I'm not a complete bear at the moment. I do believe there is a chance that this company can turn things around. And if it does turn things around, it would definitely be a huge, huge winner. The question is, are investors willing to risk the chance of it succeeding in that turnaround. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.